Hi everyone, welcome back for another Signals and Systems video. Today's topic is the unilateral Laplace transform, and we'll see three examples of computing this transform for three different types of time signals. So let's get going by first looking at the definition of the Laplace transform. We have to keep in mind that the, tra the Laplace transform is an integral transformation that relates a time signal x of t to a complex frequency domain signal x of s. So the transform is defined as x of s is equal to the integral from 0 minus to infinity of x of t e to the minus st dt. And again, s is a complex number in this transformation. So, a couple things to note. First of all, we note that we're integrating from 0 minus to infinity. Um, the integral, the fact that we're integrating from 0 minus means that we include any um, singularities at uh, t equals 0. By singularities, we might mean, say, a delta function, delta of t. So we include that. Uh, we make sure that that is included in this integration. Um, the other thing to note here is that the La unilateral Laplace transform, so the unilateral transform, is designed for causal signals and systems. So, causal signals and systems, meaning that it's really designed to work for signals that exist for t greater than or equal to zero. This is in contrast to the bilateral transform. The bilateral transform would actually um, have an integral, the integral here would go from minus infinity to plus infinity. But we're really going to focus on the unilateral transform because we're very interested in causal signals and systems, the type that show up, for example, in circuits problems. So, as I said, we'll see three examples of uh, applying this transformation. So the first example we want to take a look at is to, uh, the example of computing the Laplace transform of this signal, x1 of t, which I've defined using this graph over here, so that it's a little square box. It, it equals minus 1 starting at 4, and then up to 6, and then it's 0. It's 0 over here, and it's 0 over here. So let's see how we compute the transform using just simply the definition of the unilateral Laplace. So the definition is the integral x1 of s is equal to the integral from 0 minus to infinity of x1 of t e to the minus st dt. So this integral is actually straightforward to compute in this case. First of all, we can see that uh, the limits on the integral will change because x1 of t is only non-zero from 4 to 6. And so we can rewrite that as the integral from 4 to 6. And over that region, x1 of t is equal to minus 1. So we just substitute in minus 1 where we saw x1 of t over here. So. Uh, it's the integral of minus 1 e to the minus st dt. So that's the integral of an exponential, which is easy to compute. Um, so we pull the minus 1 outside, um, and we know we have to have over minus s here e to the minus st, just using our knowledge of what the integral of e to the minus st is. And we're going to evaluate that between 4 and 6. And so that's straightforward. We have minus 1 over minus s, which just leaves us with 1 over s, times e to the minus 6s. 
substituting in 6 wherever we saw t, and then the next one is minus minus e. I can't seem to draw e's today. e to the minus 4s. And so that's our final answer, that x of t has the transform x of s equal to 1 over s e to the minus 6s minus e to the minus 4s. So that is the analytical expression for the Laplace transform of this signal here. Okay, so that was a pretty straightforward example. Now let's see an, another one. Okay, let's consider a second example of computing the Laplace transform. I've got a signal here, x2 of t is equal to e to the minus 2t u of t. Now, uh, before starting to do a transform, it's always helpful to have a sketch of the signal. So let's sketch x2 of t over here. It's a function of t. It's a decaying exponential. Um, and so the u of t means that it starts at 0. At 0, it's equal to 1 because we have e to the minus 0. So it's 1 there, and then it's a decaying real exponential um, that goes off to um, positive infinity. So it's 0 before 0, and it's a decaying exponential after 0. So let's compute the Laplace transform. So x2 of s is the integral from 0 minus to infinity of x2 of t e to the minus st dt. That's just the definition. So if I plug in for this signal, I get the integral from 0 minus to infinity of e to the minus 2t e to the minus st dt. I guess I could draw that a little bit better. So that's an e there. Not sure that's much better, but anyway. Um, so we're calculating this integral. So I can combine these two terms together, and that'll make life a little bit easier in calculating this integral. So now I have the integral from 0 minus to infinity of e to the minus <clears throat> s plus 2t dt. So I've just combined the two exponentials. And then this is quite straightforward to integrate. I know the indefinite integral of an exponential. That will be equal to minus 1 over s plus 2 e to the minus s plus 2 t evaluated between 0 minus and infinity. So now I can substitute in, and I get minus 1 over s plus 2 times e to the minus s plus 2 times infinity minus e to the minus s plus 2 um, times 0. Well, this term on the right-hand side here is just going to be equal to 1 because e to the 0 is always equal to 1. So now the question is, what do we do with this term over here? We have this infinity. Uh, in here that might uh, cause us uh, to think a little bit carefully about about what we're getting. Um, so we know that we're trying to calculate the, this integral and we want the integral to converge. And for the integral to converge, we're going to have to have this term go to zero. And so when will that term go to zero? Um, well, this term, so remember, s is complex. s is a plus jb some generic complex number where a is the real part and b is the imaginary part. Well, so e to the minus s plus 2 times infinity is equal to e to the minus a plus 2 times infinity. We can write this in e to the minus jb times infinity. Well, the magnitude of this term is always 1, because the magnitude of a complex exponential is always 1. So really, we have to worry about the magnitude of that term. 
Well, the magnitude of that term will go to zero, right? This is zero if um, a plus two is greater than zero, or if a is greater than minus two. So if that's true, then the overall resulting integration is going to leave us, this term will go to zero, and we'll just be left with minus one over s plus two times minus one, which will just leave us with one over s plus two. And this is valid such that the real part of s is greater than minus two. Okay, and that we refer to as the region of convergence. Okay, so we know that we've calculated the uh, Laplace transform of this signal, and it's equal to the algebraic function 1 over s plus 2, and that is valid as long as the real part of s is greater than minus 2. And again, we calculated the region of convergence such that this term that we got here, where we're evaluating the limit at infinity, that has to go to zero in order for the integral to converge. Okay, so let's see an example of another, um, another Laplace transform where we can use some of what we just learned. Okay, so we have our third example here where x3 of t is equal to e to the 4t u of t. And that, um, that expression, we again, we start by just sketching it first. So I'm going to sketch e to the 4t, u of t. Well, again, the signal starts at 0. It's 0 before 0. And then at 0, it's equal to 1. Again, because e to the 0 is 1. But now it's an increasing exponential. So it's an increasing exponential that goes off towards infinity there. Okay, so we can calculate x4 of s, sorry, x3 of s, is going to be equal to the integral from 0 minus to infinity of x3 of t e to the minus st dt. So again, substituting in, I get the integral from 0 minus to infinity of e to the 4t e to the minus st dt. And again, we can combine. We can combine this into a single exponential. So that'll be the integral from 0 minus to infinity of e to the minus s minus 4t dt. Okay, and again, the minus 4 is here because it'll be minus a minus 4 will give us plus 4 that we see over here. Okay, again, we can compute this integral quite easily. The integral will be minus 1 over s minus 4 e to the minus s minus 4 t evaluated between 0 and infinity. So we get minus 1 over s minus 4 times e to the minus s minus 4 times infinity minus e to the minus s minus 4 times 0. Well, again, we're going to basically choose the values of s for which that term will go to 0. And so then we'll be left with uh, and then, of course, this is always equal to 1. So we're going to be left with minus 1 over s minus 4, minus 1 over s minus 4, times minus 1. So we get 1 over s minus 4. And that will be valid such that the real part of this exponent is positive. Because if the real part of this exponent is positive, then we know that's a decaying exponential, which will go to 0 at infinity. And so the region of convergence, or the ROC, is that the real part of s minus 4 is greater than 0, which says that the real part of s is greater than 4, if we just move that over to the other side. Okay, so that is our answer for e to the 4t, 
we get the algebraic expression 1 over s minus 4, and the region of convergence is the real part of s greater than 4. So let's just summarize this. Let's look at the two transforms that we derived. The x2 for x2, x2 of t was equal to e to the 2t u of t, and we got the transform the Laplace transform, x2 of s is equal to um, 1 over s uh, plus 2, and that was valid for the region of convergence, the real part of s greater than minus 2, and then we got x3 of t equal e to the 4t u of t and that had a Laplace transform, x3 of s is equal to 1 over s minus 4, and the region of convergence was the real part of s greater than 4. And so if we sketch these two regions of convergence for x2 um, of s, we get that the region of convergence, if we're sketching it, in the complex plane. Here's the real part of s versus the imaginary part of s. Well, that region of convergence was um, real part of s greater than minus 2, so here's minus 2 over here. And the region of convergence, which I'll sketch, um, let's say, in red here, um, was here the real part of convergence was all of the values of s um, where the real part is greater than minus 2. So that was minus 2 there. And x3 of s, the region of convergence was such that uh, it was the for the real part of s greater than 4. So if I sketch here, uh, and then I can sketch my region of convergence. It's over here. And again, this was a sketch of the real part of S versus the imaginary part of S. So now we're not going to think too much more about regions of convergence in this basic signals and systems course, but the thing that we have to remember, we're sort of implicitly defining the region of convergence uh, when we compute the transform. Because when we compute the transform, let me go back here a page. When we computed the transform, we had to have this term that has the infinity in it go to zero in order for the integral to converge. So implicitly we're saying this goes to zero, and then we're just left with this term here. And so um, that's how we got this algebraic expression. So even if we don't think too much about the region of convergence, we're implicitly using it because that's the region over which this term goes to zero. But for most of this course, it will be sufficient just to be able to get the correct algebraic expression here. So. That uh, summarizes our brief uh, video introduction to the unilateral Laplace transform, and um, you can uh, check out the lecture notes from class or try the homework to get more practice with the unilateral Laplace transform. So that ends our introduction. Thanks for watching.